This update is definitely taking the longest time to make, as it's almost been a month since the last devlog. But first, some announcements. So first, join the Discord. There you'll get leaks about future updates, meet people who also like the game, and vote on things that might come in future updates. So join the Discord. Also, we are getting really close to 1k subs, and we are almost at the big milestone of 800. So keep on subscribing, guys. This is a huge goal of mine. Anyway, let's get into it. But first, let's go back. Wait, no. Not, not that far back. About here. October 7th. So basically, I reached a Halloween event, and it's been out for this entire month. And by the time you see it, it's, a, it's gonna be over already. And even though it's pretty much over, I'm gonna go over it anyway. So this was a custom level idea, so the level for the event was a graveyard level. So I mapped it out and started placing trees and tombstones around. Now this is the first level to have two puzzles in it. The first puzzle was to find a lever around the first part of the map. There they would open a gate that would lead to the second part, which is way bigger. And in this section, the entity is unleashed. The entity is the Grim Reaper, which is ready to kill you, okay? He's gonna kill everyone. So the second puzzle is finding four crucifixes that are placed around the map. And once the player saw all four, the final gate would open, and then they would escape. Now you may be asking, I already beat the level in the event, but I want to play it again, but it's past November 1st, so I can't play it. Well, don't worry, because whoever beat the event and got the badge is able to play it anytime you want in the hub. Now after that, I went on vacation and came back, so I made a big decision. This decision was to change how levels load. So here's how the game used to work. So you'd enter the game, and once you beat a level, the old level will unload and the new level will reload as you beat them. But this was laggy and all the levels were in one big hub place. Not hub the level, but just one big game. This is like pure phobia, which made the game super laggy. Like a pure phobia. But then you have the Chad Backrooms Infinite, which is, I'm a dev for now. Anyway, in TBI, each level lo loads and teleports all the players to a different place. So each level isn't in one big place, but multiple separate places. This allows me to add more detail to levels, and it makes the game a lot less laggy. So I ported, at the time, all 25 levels to the new system, and it was definitely worth it. Now you may be asking, why I haven't talked about any of the new levels yet? Well, it's because I'm going in chronological order, so bear with me here. <laughs> Get it? Because the FNAF movie? Um. Anyway, next thing. So the next thing I did was revamp all the Entity AI, because in the words of View in my Discord, and TBI's Discord, your game is utter trash, and you copied my sword, so I'll turn you into a pug and then run you over. Also, the monsters are big deadlifts. And remember, got the second chances is equal to second mantises. So, after that rambling of him, I made all the entity AIs, and now they start in a wandering state, where they just kind of wander around to different waypoints. And then when you, the player gets in their point of view, they start chasing you. I then remade the jump scares, and now they are way better. So instead of there being a second jump scare model of the entity that the jump scare camera would would teleport the player's vision to, the new camera is in front of the entity's face and um yeah, jump scare. Anyway, that made the jump scares way better. I then decided that level 0 was not scary enough. I changed the lighting in the level and changed the bacteria model to be way scarier. I then added wood boards in the level as well as outlets spread around so that it's more accurate to the wiki. I then made other levels more scary. So I took the hound thing out of the habitable zone and put it in the pipe dreams. I then added a dollar entity into, into the electrical station and a death moth entity into level 8. I also changed level 10 a lot to make it look better. So now there's hills and the lighting's better and the windmills actually turn. The next thing I did was finally fix the level 0 opening cutscene to make it actually work. So now, when you first join the game, or first start playing the game, you actually have a good basis of what the game's lore is actually about. Also, by this time, Roblox had fixed all the major bugs with PlayStation, and now people actually start playing TBE on PS4s and PS5. So, that happened, I guess. And finally, I then got to work on the new update. So the first level I added was level 190, also known as the school. The level is described as a high school hallway with classes on both sides. Some of the classroom doors cannot be opened. The school is most likely designed after a school in America. So with that, I made this gigantic place. But that's not the entrance. So very cool in the Discord suggests that I should add more liminal levels. And one of those pictures was a level of a school-like room. That This liminal space picture was also in Evan's game called Inner Liminality, which you should definitely play. I'll put a link in the description. So anyway. That made me even want to add it more, so then I put it there, and there's going to be another puzzle in there to make you get to the actual school part of the level. 
This is also where the player will spawn. Now after that puzzle, you'll get to the main puzzle for that level, which I won't tell you about because it spoil the lore. Anyway, there are two entities in this level, which are both mimics. These are entities that look like Tristan and will try and trick you into thinking that they are your teammate. Now they are almost as fast as you, so you might be asking, how will I escape these things? Well you have to close doors behind you to block their path or hide in classrooms, then they will leave you alone. Now time for the next level, which is not a real level, but it's also a place that exists in actual Backham's lore. So the next level I added is Meg Base Alpha, which is a real place in lore. So in actual lore, Base Alpha is a Meg Base in level 1, but in my game it's going to be its own level and will serve as Meg's main HQ, or what was its HQ. So in the level, it will be the ruins of the base, as if there was a battle here, which there was, which I won't say because spoilers to the game's lore. If you remember about a month ago in the last devlog, I said that there was going to be a boss battle planned, and here it is. So basically, what, whatever attacked the Meg base decided to be a real bad person, and affected all the survivors of the battle with bacteria from level 0, including this giant Gundam mech. So not only will we have to beat this giant robot to open the exit to the level, you'll also have to beat these scientists and soldiers and scouts that were once Meg soldiers that got turned into um, infected monsters. Now on to the next level, which I would have never been able to do without the new level loading system. This level also happens to be one of the oldest suggestions for my game, which is level 14, also known as the Oasis. The level is described as a <coughs> an oasis, the forest from your dreams, shimmering in the night. Close your eyes for a moment. You can see it, right? The crashing waterfalls? The crimson grass, wet with dew, the eternally starlit sky, even with the branches on the trees reaching up as if they're trying to touch it. You can hear the forest whispering to you, you'll be happy here, you're sure of it all. After all, everyone else is, and why should you feel down when the others are so content? So yeah, this is a trick level to make you think that you're safe, when really, it's your death here. So I took this ASMR description and the image and made this, which looks perfect. Also later in the wiki page, it mentions children lying in the ground, howling at the moon. Which um, yeah, they're probably dead. So I added some random kids giggling sounds in the level to kinda, you know, make you poop your pants. The level also drains your sanity really really fast, so you need to find almond water to make sure you don't die. So now for the final level of the update, which is Ashes to Ashes or level negative 319. Now this level is very special as it ages people who are in it. So for every 5 minutes you are in the level, you are age 1 year, and this also applies for entities. Now you may be asking then, why is there ash on the floor? Well this includes the age of your skeletal remains. So after you die, your bones will also end up aging and will end up disintegrating, which all the ash. Now, the level is described as a moldy abandoned house covered in a thick layer of dust and debris. The home is a 3 bedroom, 1.5 bedroom residency consisting of a basement, attic, living room, dining room, kitchen, and a study slash office. Now before you ask, I have no idea how a house has 1.5 bathrooms. Like how does a house have half a bathroom? Anyway, I added all that besides the attic, basement, and dining room. So with that, I made this, and it looks great. Now the main mechanic for the level is that you'll have a two minute timer on your screen, and that is how long you have, you have to escape the level before you disintegrate. So yeah, I think five minutes is way too long, and they'll end up finding out how to exit it, which the puzzle is a bit tricky. So yeah, that's how you escape the level. And that's pretty much it for this update, and there's definitely more to come in the future. Now before I end the video, some big things did happen during the time between this devlog and the last devlog. So first, by the time you guys are seeing this, the game would have hit 10k visits. So that's crazy. And now the game usually has concurrent players at all times, usually being from like 3 to 8 people. Also the channel almost gained another 100 subs after that devlog, so thank you guys. That's why we're so close to 800. Also, apparently, in Suna's most recent stream, which you don't know who Suna is, he's a, a Pyrophobia Backrooms Roblox YouTuber, Evan decided to shout my game out in his stream, and 
and Suna actually saw it and said that it will probably be a different stream. And if you don't believe me, here's a clip. Probably be a different stream. So yeah, October has been a really crazy month, and I really just want to thank you guys for supporting me on this. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next devlog. See you later, nerd.